honestly say uh, I've been waiting for this moment my whole life, um, or a version of this moment. I, I grew up, excuse me, I gotta get the speech out, I forgot to do that. I did write some stuff down, but uh, before I get into that, I, I grew up uh, in this family. This, this has been family uh, on so many levels, and, and I learned that at a very young age from my dad, that um, there really isn't a better place to be than the University of Texas. There is a, really wasn't a place that he was more thankful for growing up. And, uh, excuse me, sorry. They said you got emotional last year, so <laughs> they said, that's TJ. Uh, no, uh, but this really is emotional and it really is special. And uh, the, a story I'm reminded of well, was Roger Clemens. Uh, and it's been echoed by Dennis Cook and, and Greg Swindell and a number of guys that I, I've talked with uh, who gone, went on to long professional careers, and I'm still in the middle of mine, hopefully. And, uh, but they said it'll never get any better, ever, no matter what. It'll never get any better than your years at, at the University of Texas. And I remember being a freshman, and Clemens is standing there in the huddle talking to all of us. He's got his Texas hat on, which we all thought was the coolest thing in the world because he had a Yankee uniform on underneath it. They just won the World Series. And uh, 10 years later, after being in the big leagues, um, there, there's nothing better. There is nothing cooler in the world uh, than this family. And guys, it's mad at some. <laughs> uh, but the first person I do want to thank who's in this family and who's coming in here with me tonight is actually Cedric Benson. Uh, because when I was coming out of high school, I did have a dream to be just like my dad. And I did have a dream to play two sports at the University of Texas. And I did kind of have a chance to do that. I think Coach Brown. Um, I did kind of have a chance. And so I remember talking to Dad about it actually before that game and him being like, bud, you're going up against a real football player. I mean, <laughs> are you ready for this? And I was like, yeah, I'm ready for this. You know, I mean, I'm just like, it's the first time I've ever seen my dad like actually like express some concern for me. <laughs> You know, and uh, so anyway, we play the game, and as Coach said, I think, you know, the story keeps growing. The article in the paper the next day was 17 tackles, and uh, the last time I read the article in the States when it was 20-something tackles, so I'll take it, but but uh, I remember waking up the next morning, and Dad was, I, I, it was as if he was, like, waiting. He knew, he knew, it was like he was sitting right there on the chair, and I slept on the couch because I probably couldn't make it upstairs. And he was like, and I was like, how you feeling, bud? I was like, I'm okay. And he was like, I got a question for you. And he goes, are you sure you want to do that every single day? <laughs> and so, where is Cedric? Where is he? There, he's right in front of me. Hey, man, thank you so much. Because <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, being a closer in baseball is easy compared to that day. <laughs> Easy. And, uh, and I really am, though. These guys that I'm coming in with, uh, so many of these guys, I was inspired by. I was telling Corey Redding before, before the day, my senior year, um, <clears throat> all I ever want to do is come to UT. That's it. I, I didn't care if I played sports. I didn't care. It was, I remember telling one of my best friends in high school, he's like, hey, you know, you, do you wanna, what do you want to do sports-wise? And uh, I said, well, I, I'm going to UT. Like, if I'm not good enough to play sports at UT, then I just won't play sports. I'm going to UT. That's it. I want to be a Longhorn. That was it. And uh, so anyway, it was a really big deal when Saturday football games, we had, like, Sunday, Saturday morning, like, walkthroughs, and then we'd go tailgate, and we'd rush down there. And, of course, we were, like, 18-year-old kids, so we didn't realize how important a tailgate spot was. So we'd just pull in there like idiots and steal somebody's spot that had been there for, like, 20 years. <laughs> And so every single Saturday, we were, like, getting in a fight, then making up with, like, some local who, you know, people had family tradition. And that, well, that one day, what saved us was a cake. We had a cake that we brought, and, uh, and the cake said, Corey Redding eats people. <laughs> and th that was our, that was our pregame speech. But when I look out in this room and I, and I think of my life and, and I, I'm reminded of something my dad always told me, which was uh, it takes a team. It, it takes a team. And there's so many guys in here from TJ, from on the basketball team, the football team, the, the well, baseball team are all my friends, but from girls soccer to 
uh, swimming and diving. You know, we would look around and we'd see other people doing stuff. We wanted to do that stuff. And I think that was, that's the beauty of the University of Texas is it, it, it demands greatness. In, in a world that's willing to accept mediocrity, we're not. We're not, and, I, and I've seen that time and time again, and I keep, you know, the University of Texas winning tradition will not be entrusted to the timid nor the weak. And it, it was something that, that my dad always, he, he, he like bred into us, which, which was though is, as we're all in here, we all realize we're here because of other people. We're here because of teammates. And uh, I told Peshwell, I said, I'm, I'm glad he's here tonight because one of the most profound speeches I've ever been given as I get into my list now uh, it was a speech that Augie Greedo, the, the day before the, uh, the day of the national championship game in 2002, and here I am in this moment, and, and I've lived that moment a thousand times through stories from my dad, and here I am, the, the culmination of what was the biggest moment of my life, uh, and still one of the biggest moments to this day, and I'm thinking about how important it is, and, and so I'm sitting there wondering, because Coach Greedo was so perfect with the process. And I wondered to myself, what's he going to say to us? How's he going to say something? And there's so many things that coaches could say, uh, that, that coaches could do in that moment. But Coach Greedo walked in. It was about 25 seconds long. And he looked at all of us. And he said, guys, there's a lot I could say. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this. And you, you need to remember this for the rest of your life. The world treats winners different than it treats losers. I mean, that's pretty serious, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and, and I remember in that moment being reminded of all the things that my dad had taught me about in that he, he had this, this interesting dichotomy of it's real and it's fake, and it's real and it's fake. And uh, the fake thing that he said was he goes like, bud, everybody calls me a winner. I'm 20 and 0, and I'm this amazing quarterback. Uh, but what happens if Peschel drops the pass? What happens? He's like, who am I? Am I, am I, am I not the winner? Did I, do I not have the same brain? Did I not throw the same ball? And so on another level, I do want to thank you, Mr. Peschel, for catching that pass. <laughs> <laughs> because I would not be standing here today without him. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. And so in that moment, coach walked off. And I remember thinking, we're sitting there in the first inning. They got bases loaded. They got nobody out. Justin Simmons is on the mound, and I'm scared to death. I'm like, we're going to lose. Like, we're going to lose this game. And Justin Simmons gets out of that inning, gives up one run. One run. We score three in the next inning. We go on. The game goes back and forth. Brandon Fahey gets a base hit with the bases loaded. It bounces right off the second baseman's glove. We score two more, so I go into the ninth inning instead of with a two-run lead, with a four- or five-run lead. And I remember, you know, that's a little bit different of an atmosphere. But, and I still blame making the USA baseball team literally on that game, on the fact that I was given four chances to save a game. Uh, and I never, like I said, I, I never really wanted to play sports. I wanted to be a Longhorn. That was it. We win that game. We win the national championship. And as Coach Harmon said, well, they had to put you on the USA team. Because, I mean, how could they leave off the, the World Series MOP, which there were so many guys on that team that deserved it. Simmons got two wins. Dustin Maeski absolutely went off. But they chose me, and they put me on the team. And I'm, I got absolutely lucky because I came home that summer, and I said to my dad, I said, Dad, I think I can do this. I think I can really, really do this. And uh, I did have to ask him permission, though, because that year another coach, Frank Anderson, had lowered my arm angle. And I said, now, Dad, I, I need to talk to you. I need to have a pretty serious talk. Uh, and I'm nervous about what you're going to say. And I'm, I, to this day, this is actually a conversation that I regret and I plan to fix. Um, but I, I, I said, hey, Dad, you know, I think I can do this baseball thing. I think I really can do this baseball thing. But I've only been pitching from right here for like six months. Uh, I'm going to have to work on this. So, so I might have to skip a little class. <laughs> <laughs> which he was not cool with <laughs> at all. And, uh, and he said, hey, bud, you can, do, you can do both. You can do both. And, uh, and that's something, uh, you know, uh, I've learned in the last year uh, that when you have difficulty with something, you, you need to share it with people. And so, uh, as I told Coach before, the, the T-ring that so many of my 
friends have, um, I think is one of the coolest rings that exists. And I'm going to get it. And, uh, and that's important because uh, it's starting something and it's finishing something. And that's, that's what, again, the, it's, it's part of that motivation that I think drives me throughout my life. And that's what the university has been for me. It's been the driving force in my life. It's been the reason I've wanted to do anything. It's been, it's been when I've left the university, the, the remembrance of everything so special. It's been looking back on this wall and seeing all these guys and remembering the picture of Casey Hampton in the weight room every single day when I went in there. I remember that picture and his arms are huge and I'm this tiny little guy and I'm thinking, I'm gonna be that big someday, you know? <laughs> Not a smart thought, but. But still, something that, that, that motivated you, that wanted to make you better, that wanted to make you uh, continue to go. And, uh, and, and then I look over here at my teammates and my friends, and I think of uh, what Mike said. I mean, if you can go through life, and uh, I'm not going to ask him to stand up just because I really don't like him that much. You know? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Th th those are my brothers over there. Th those are some of the coolest people I've ever been around. They're the people that have been very real with me. And so, like I said, there, there's the real and there's the fake. And uh, the fake, it, 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 like Dad said, but it, that's, it's your job to not believe what everybody tells you. That's your job. That's your job is not to believe what everybody tells you. But I promise you that getting it done matters. And as a closer, my entire life, I wouldn't even have a, my existence doesn't matter unless everybody in front of me gets it done. Unless every single person that steps onto that field, I walk into the game uh, with us with the lead. And so I want to thank all my teammates who came here tonight and, uh, because I didn't ask them to come, and they did that on their own, and that means the world to me. Uh, it does, so thank you. Uh, now, this next one I get to have a little fun with, because this is Coach Harmon. <laughs> he is Mr. Encouragement, by the way. Um, I remember my first day walking onto UT on the baseball field. This is some summer day in August, and... Uh, Seth and I, we got our hat on backwards, and we think we're cool. And I know Coach because I've grown up with him. I, went, I actually went to his Hall of Honor induction, uh, went to the after party at his house, and I can remember running around, getting in trouble for breaking stuff. And uh, so I walk on the field, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to walk up to Coach and just be, hey, man, what's up? How you doing? He's like, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, what? excuse me, sir? And he was like, turn that hat around. And I was like, okay, Coach, I I'm sorry. And so uh, didn't think that was a big deal, but thought it was a big deal. Anyway, like for the rest of that semester, I don't know how coach did it. I don't know if he was following me. I don't know if he was, but literally every single time I had my hat on backwards, coach would come find me and would pull me aside. And then I, d I guess you were telling my dad because my dad just called me on the phone one day. He's like, hey, bud, you got your hat on backwards. Because <laughs> Harmon is not happy about it. And that really is Coach Harmon in a nutshell. I mean, it's just a backwards hat, Coach. <laughs> but what was real about Coach Harmon and what I love about him is that he's been there for me. He's been there for my dad. He's been there for my mom. He's been there for our family. He is a person who is the most real person that I know. He is a person who uh, will tell me when I'm being an idiot. He will tell me when he's proud of me. And you know it's real and you know it's true and I'm thankful for people like that because um, as an athlete uh, you tend to make not some of the smartest choices and, and my wife is well aware of that and we'll get to her in a second because uh, I met her well I should just dive right into it shouldn't I honey no um, well I did I met my wife on the last day I was at college and I was going out with Buck Cody and Curtis Thigpen and Seth Johnston and uh, I had to, I, I told them, guys, tonight's the night that, you know, I'm, I always go out with you guys and I always come in early and I always try to get to bed early and I always get my rest. <laughs> but tonight I'd really appreciate it if y'all would like, you know, not go, you know, paint the town red. Because um, I was always the quiet, shy, like humble one, you know. 
And so the first person that I walk in and see is my wife standing there. And two weeks later, it doesn't matter what happened that night, two weeks later I told her I love her. And a week later she breaks up with me. <laughs> and uh, I'm thankful that she's here tonight because this is really my only proof that I've actually done something good. <laughs> Other than my children, uh, which their bad behavior she blames on me. <clears throat> but this past year has been especially difficult for me, uh, obviously with losing my dad, my hero, my my everything. Uh, well, uh, not everything, but m the person who uh, I always strove to be and, and, and really looked up to because of what so many of you tell me about him. And uh, I'm humbled uh, to even be included in a class similar to him, but um, I'm thankful for my wife for being hard on me when you, you, you think you're tough, you think you're mentally tough, you always think, I can do anything, I'm blah, 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 I'm this, and I, I, I can ride a tidal wave on, on a surfboard, I did write that, I promise you, because <laughs> I remember saying I always wanted to see a tidal wave, but she has always been honest and real with me, and she doesn't believe in all the hype and what is fake, she believes in, in be a good dad. Be a good husband. Uh, come home, spend time with your kids. And, and, you know, as an athlete, sometimes you get jaded and you, you as a competitor, you want to do so many things um, in life to prove that you're more than that, that you're more than just an athlete. And she's taught me that, as Mike said, uh, you can win national championships as a father. You can win national championships as a husband. You can win national championships just relaxing and, and enjoying time. And, and I can honestly say that I didn't really understand that uh, until this year. And so thank you, because I love you. That's my wife. And then I get to my mom, and uh, she is absolutely uh, the strongest person I know. Um, she is someone who was always encouraging to me. She is always somebody who gave me that belief, who gave me that hope, who um, finished my homework in high school, <laughs> which I needed in college. But, <laughs> but she, uh, she was the person, as my dad would attest to, we called her the glue. She was the glue of all of us. She was, the, uh, she was kind of the voice of reason. Um, she always had the best message to deliver in that moment, she's the reason my wife and I are married, uh, because after my wife broke up with me for the third time, uh, uh, yeah, yes, um, she was like, don't give up, you know, don't quit, and she handed me a picture book um, with all these pictures of me and my wife, and uh, I got really mad. I was like, mom, you know, we broke up, and I don't, you know, I'm done with that person. You know, she hates me, and she's not going to call me, and it was embarrassing, and I got comp competitive like an idiot. And she was like, you know what? You, you're just, you're being silly right now. You, I can see in your eyes that you care about that girl. I can see in your eyes that, and, and, you know, that moment, that singular moment, I can remember sitting in our house when she, when she handed me that book. Um, it was a moment that changed my life forever uh, because she, she knew what to say at the right time. And if my dad was here, he would give her all the credit in the world, and I give my mom uh, all the same credit in the world. So I love you, Mom. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, you know, my dad's not with us, <clears throat> but he is. And uh, he meant so much to to this university, he meant so much to so many people. He was such a hero um, at this place. But as he, to me, he was just always just dad. He wasn't James Street, the quarterback. And one of the, the most important things he, he, excuse me. One of, the, excuse me. Uh, one of the most important things he he said was, "Bud, no matter what, I'll always love you. But winning is being the best that you can be. 
And, and that's what this place is about. And that's what the University of Texas is. And, and my, my last thing I wrote on here is what I believe. And sorry, I try to get all the crying out before. To, uh, what I believe is that this place makes people better. I believe that this place saves lives. And, and from the bottom of my heart, I thank each and every one of you because in some individual way, in some collective way, I'm here because of each and every one of you and so many more people. But I mean every single word when I say that the University of Texas is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, that's ever happened to this family. And I forever cherish it because it has brought, it has brought, Without the University of Texas, I wouldn't have met my wife. I, w I wouldn't have my two brothers, Hanson and Justin, who are here, uh, and Jordan, one of my other brothers, who, who couldn't make it um, because my dad met my mom. I wouldn't have all of this, and I wouldn't have my friends sitting over there at that, at that table who, who mean the world, and so many of these relationships. And, and that's what I really believe, as Mike said, that it is relationships, and it is love, and it is passion. But I love this place. This means this is the this is it. I'm done. <laughs> so, thank you so much. God bless and hook 'em horns. <laughs>